Hello and welcome to World TV. Today's show, we're going to talk about workforce management. You've joined us at our usual time of 5 p.m. Thursday. That's if you're in Sweden, like we are. We are streaming from Black Frog Studios in Stockholm. And in the studio with us right now is Johanna Ferestedt. She is the CMO of Quinix, an online workforce management solution and international tech company based in Stockholm. They have customers like Rituals Cosmetics, McDonald's, and Gantt. So if you have any questions about how to collaborate in the workplace, how to keep schedule, she is your expert. Chris, our founder of World, is sitting in the control room. Say hello, Chris. He says hi. <laughs> He's going to be joining the seat shortly. But for now, let's go to, hello, oh, there he is. He says hi. Yay. But for now, let's go to Tech News. Okay, so this week, this week a string of Chinese stocks fell hard after the arrest of Huawei's chief financial officer Meng Wanzhou after concerns over U.S.-China trade. Meng is the daughter of Huawei's founder and CEO Ren Zhenghui, and he, uh, she's been arrested on suspicion that Huawei has violated American sanctions in Iran. If Huawei are to have a similar penalty to the main competitor, ZTE, who pleaded guilty to violating sanctions in Iran and North Korea earlier this year, they risk having the U.S. government restrict Huawei purchasing from American component makers. Chris, when you get back out here, I've got to ask you, what is your relationship with the Chinese government? Can I get a, a, a good a thumbs? Oh, he's coming out. He has something to say about world's collaboration with the Chinese government. He's giving the thumbs up, I think. I am oh, you're coming, coming out, out here. You're coming, coming out. out okay. Slowly, slowly. Sorry about that. Okay. It always takes me a little while that's, to make sure. That's right. It's just the suspense is like. Yes, the suspense. It's, Everyone it's is really, waiting. Okay. So what is your relationship with the Chinese government? Well, it's, uh, it's, very, it's secret. I cannot talk about that. You walked all the way out here just to say it's a secret? Yes. Yes, that's true. But? Yeah. Can't talk about it. Okay, no, 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 fine. fine it's fine, a fine, good fine. relationship. Fine, it's good. It's very good. But there is a relationship. Well, yes, 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 and it's good. Okay. Oh, That's as much as I can say about it. Okay. All right. Mm. Have you read, read in one of these things before? Sorry? Have you tried one of these guys before? One of these. A, yeah, a bird you know scooter. What? They are actually out right here. Right here. Have you seen them? Okay. Like they're, yeah, they're because, everywhere. Yeah, they're, they're absolutely everywhere. everywhere right now. It's like... Uh, Another idea we stole from China, I think. From China. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, there's been rumors that uh, Bird, the company shown on the screen right now, is about to be acquired by Uber. Uber. Now, Uber <laughs> acquired another uh, a similar company called Lime earlier this year. Uh, I think they gave them $350 million in seed financing. And they've been promised to advertise uh, on, to be advertised on uh, Uber's app. And on Ooh. buses and other transport. It's hmm. quite exciting. Wow, that is cool. It's super cool. So I just wonder. But what does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? It means are, like, is this going to turn into like, cars? I, or are Uber cars going to turn I into don't, this? I don't know. I don't know. You know, our CTO, Matthias, yeah. would love this. He's yeah, going yeah. to. So th they've had scooter. bikes in China for a long time, right? Yeah. That you can kind of the same thing. You, you kind right. of can take them and you can go yeah. and you just have this app and that, that kind of thing. The problem is they break down and they're really expensive to fix. What? You know? Wait, cars or scooters? Yeah. Chris? Yep. Um, sorry? Cars or scooters? Cars, yeah, well, it's basically bikes. The thing is they break down and they create a huge mass. So it, it's, it was something that worked really well for one or two years. Okay. And now it's kind of like no one wants to take care of the bikes. And you have a, like completely like only 50% of the bikes actually work. And lots of them are broken. And because oh. no one really owns them, people don't care. Like if, if you rent yeah. that, people don't care. 
Yes. They would be like, so ah, true. whatever, you know. So true. I'm done. So I Take guess, it away. I guess we're never going to Uberfy the world's ball. I don't think I don't think Uber is a good business model for okay. us. Okay. That, that's but fine. that's up to Felix. Maybe, up, yeah. maybe, Felix maybe he will find some, you know, magic way. <laughs> so, and also in news, a LinkedIn competitor, Sansun, not sure if I'm pronouncing correctly, Sansun, has raised, Sansun, has, Sansun <laughs> has raised 26.5 million US dollars to expand its business into Japan. Oh my They've God. got 7,000 corporations mm. using its product. And basically the product is you can scan and digitize business cards. And then you can upload it to the network, the public network, which is kind of like LinkedIn. My question is, why does this exist? Why, why isn't LinkedIn just digit, not just doing like? How do you how do you fight LinkedIn? Well, that's a, that, I mean, mm -hmm. I think they're already. All you need to do is block LinkedIn, and then it's like open. I mean, China has been right. in there for a long time, so, but so now this is they, they were entering they were entering South Korea, right? Japan. 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 Okay. Okay. But that's, well, that would be a smart move too. Yeah, just block smart. it. Just block, block it. it. It's very mm. simple. Okay. Can worlds block? Can, what can we block? We yeah, can get blocked, can... unfortunately. We're not a country, so we we're can't not... really block anything. I think also the whole thing is we're completely the opposite. We want yeah. the world to be connected oh rather God. than, you know. It's so fitting you should say that, Chris, because we're up to round two of the Oh, world. right, 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 right. And there, are, there has been progress. There has been progress. There. Okay, I've got data. I've got data! Oh my oh, god. Oh, we're sitting in the way of the data. No, I'm doing that. You've got to like move everything. Okay. I, I don't okay. know what to do. Um, oh, right, the chart. Okay, you know, just stay. It's a chart. I mean, it's a chart, but that is a beautiful chart. You I know? made it. Yeah. And as yeah. you can see, by the way, before we go on, you can see there is some Christmas, light Christmas decorations. Oh, yeah, here, floating here in there. the green there, screen. You know, we're, we're, we, we're not doing that. Okay, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> I had to do something a little bit. Um, yes. You'll be able to see. There's some small stuff around. Oh yes. I didn't I... go. I didn't go full retard. Wait, wait, wait. Did I? I did go full. Well, you, 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 really... you did do oh, this. Damn it! You had to show you them this. this. I. It was too much. Okay, it's coming. It's gonna get more Christmassy, but I couldn't help myself. I prepared some Christmas stuff. Um, the, that's a. Uh, these things are also among them. <laughs> Sorry the about that. Morning. I know. Morning. Yeah. yeah. I got it excited. All, I got it all excited. started. Okay, so the the, yeah. the game that I'm blocking. All right. Is love bounce. Okay. And and you're blocking uh, oh, pets. Move your pets. move your ass. Move your ass to okay. the left. Okay, you're blocking pets. Okay, so <laughs> Love pets. Bounce has had eight downloads. So if you're if you're a fan of Love Bounce, share this video and urge your friends and family to download. Yeah. Uh, pets has had twenty six downloads. Beatball has had forty three downloads. Fish Gauge 60 downloads, and it looks like and, a winner. Yes, yes. Uh, World Stats has had 125 downloads and so easily has won $3,000 thanks to y'all. So $3,000 is coming its way to one of these developers that entered the two week World Hackathon. Nice. Badass. Badass! That's very cool. That very is cool. amazing. Congratulations. And if the next uh, developer gets 100 downloads, I mean, they will, right? It will happen. These slides are really happen. on your head here. Yeah. I can't <laughs> say anything. Love the anything. placement. Oh my god, what's happening? <laughs> I'm like perfectly tall and but, uh, we, we kind of probably set yeah. this. Yeah, it's judging my, my, it's my exact thing. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry yeah. about that. That's why we're a hat for yeah, safety. Good. <laughs> but the, the second game to get 100 downloads is also going to get $2,000. Two thousand dollars. Okay. Wow, exactly. that's nice. Exactly. Exactly. And it just keeps going. Uh, then they'll get a thousand dollars for the third game. All right. So, so head over to the Google Play Store. Look up W R L D S, and you'll find all these games and also the OG games. So basically, game. keep on going. Yeah. Now exactly. I have to ask: Is it possible to soon check out the YouTube? Uh, sorry, the Facebook uh, uh, channel and stuff? Because I cannot use my computer. Oh, today. okay, okay. It is Let's out see. of battery, so I won't be monitoring. Okay. Anything. All right. So yeah, that's so we can keep an eye on what's happening and okay. so on. So but basically, when it comes to this thing, right, keep on downloading, keep on promoting your game because there's a, there's a lot more to come. But that is quite amazing still, and really congratulations to Dance, right? Yeah, exactly. That is pretty huge. Exactly. And it was like I I'm still blown away by these games, and I I can't you know stress that enough. But yeah. 
Um, yeah, it seems like dance, dance has had the most, um, you know, at least uh, initial success. But that means nothing. Fight, come on, promote it, promote it, and help us promote you. Um, obviously, I'm sure that uh, that we are, and the more balls come out there, the more that's kind of getting that snowball to roll. Uh, but keep working at it, and it's gonna, you know, it's gonna get more and more. So, yeah, what have people exactly. been saying? Here? Anything interesting? Um, I, I think. Uh... Oh, there's a little bit of gossip. Apparently, there's been another game that has also reached 100 downloads. Oh, really? Can this be verified? Felix, I know you're watching. Felix, can you please verify this before oh, I do a big... We are sitting here with outdated information. How is that possible? I don't know. It should have been know. real time. I just, just, just flip the table. But it's such a beautiful yeah. chart. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so yeah. impressed. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, I like nice yeah, graphics. Mm -hmm. And there's yeah. a heart, you know, it's everything. Yeah, it's every, it's, yeah, it's, every, it's, every, it's everything. It's everything. It's just, it's just, yeah. Um, nice. Oh, we're, we're blocking the code. We do have to move. Oh, first. my God. We are, we have to move. It's, my, it's my stupid okay, planning well, here. Okay. okay. Wait, if I go okay. this way? Yeah, keep going. You have to keep going. walk in front of the world's okay. ball. There. Okay, keep going. Right. Because if you want to buy but one of these I'm, that's, I'm getting cut off. balls, you can, because you need the world's ball to play these games, of course. So Worlds gotcha. are presenting a special offer. Uh, if you enter the Christmas code, Fun Christmas, you get $10 off the Worlds ball. Yeah. Fun Christmas. Fun we Christmas. We can return to our seats now. And if you enter the cheat code, Boring Christmas, you get to buy it at the full price. The full which price. Which is quite an amazingly hey! good price. Amazing, amazing. And then you can enter Chris special price, right? Chris special prize? The one that I didn't win. What's your win? special prize? I'm supposed to win a prize. I, we've been talking about oh, this for I'm, a long I'm sorry. time. I'm sorry. And you Wait. still get no discount because apparently that was a lie. There was no Chris prize. I, you guys. I, you guys. <sighs> That's typical. Chris. It's typical. This is awkward. <laughs> we should go to an interview. Are you ready for Johanna? Let's Are you ready for, for Johanna? Interview. Can I hear from the audience? <sighs> Let's go to an interview. <laughs> Johanna, come on song. through. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And Welcome. what a nice time. Hi, thank you. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Nice to see you. Nice <laughs> yeah, to have you here. Yeah, great to be here. And love the studio. An amazing timing again. Oh, was it, wasn't it? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. like uh, Lee. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. You're yeah. like it's it's happening. Yeah. I can yeah. feel it. Like, Got a good okay. brief before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. So how are you today? Uh, yeah, really good. Yeah. Have you come yeah. in from the office or are you? No, I, I was actually at the um, sales and marketing conference. Okay. Yeah. So that was uh, really, really cool. So feeling very inspired and uh, ready for the new year. Okay. So we're working. So I'm the CMO, obviously yes. working with marketing, but also uh, working very closely with sales and focusing right. on our growth. Uh, so that so I was there with our uh, sales director mm. uh, on our Swedish market. So yeah, mm. we got really we, we became a like close tag team and discuss different tactics for next year. So how to attack the market. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Destroy. Get, get <laughs> no, it's Destroy. not really how you do it nowadays, right? Because no? you provide, oh. uh, provide the customers with really good uh, content and like get them a good value. So okay. we don't talk about the tax. No destroy. Providing value. <laughs> That's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no you're, attacking you're anymore. You're in seven markets now. Yeah, seven. That's yeah, right. Yeah. 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 So you're in the Nordics. Um, uh, and then we're in the UK. It's actually our biggest growth market right now. Started it up in 2014. Okay. So it's been a really cool journey. Great. Uh, and then we started up our office in Germany now in April. So it, it's also been a really like a really cool journey. And uh, right now we're starting up in the Netherlands. So okay. yeah. Are you about uh, to open? Exactly. So we've started doing some some marketing activities. Yeah. We had a launch party uh this week, actually, in Amsterdam. Um, so yeah, so it's exciting. And four hundred thousand users. Yeah. Four hundred. Yeah, that's a yeah. lot. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a lot of users. Yeah. Good. So it's, it, um, and it, I'm sure you have a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. I, I just like, I, yeah. it, what is it doing? So what we're doing? So what is yeah. It? So basically, we're a workforce management management solution, and what is that? It's basically a solution for scheduling and for. Um, 
uh, for the employees to be able to see when they are working. So we're focusing, our target groups are hospitality, retail and healthcare, a warehouse and logistics, where you have a lot of people working part-time. And then for them, it all started with our founder, Eric Fjallborg, when he was working extra at McDonald's, when he was only 17 years old. So it was crazy. Then he found out that his manager uh, at the restaurant then spent a lot of time just, you know, trying to get those workers into the restaurants. And they would call him at any time of the day saying that someone had called in sick and that they needed a replace a replacer really fast. And then he thought that it must be a quicker way of doing this. So basically uh, coded and formed a, a program, a web-based program. And that was back in 2005, so that was not very common where the employees themselves could see when they would be working and the manager could then have a look and make sure that all the shifts were being filled by people and if someone would call in sick or then they would apply through the through the web-based system then you could easily find someone else and send out notifications so mcdonald's sweden became uh, eric's first customer and then we've grown the business from there so it's yeah and it's actually called mctime at mcdonald's but now we're in seven countries and uh, working have taken that from you know um, yeah. hospitality, retail to uh, basically all industries we have a high need of getting that flexibility for the workers so that they can have a good you know, work-life balance mm. see when they will be working but also you know, from the employee's perspective getting the, getting the possibility to really make sure that you have the right people at the right place mm. at the right time, optimize your costs and also now, now for Christmas for example, for retailers it's about 90% of their sales uh, that that is taking place uh, in December before Christmas. And then they need to have, I mean, the right number of staff uh, at the mm. stores to be able to support that and to be able to like mm. handle all that sales. Yeah. Mm. What, yeah. What, I mean, imagine uh, selling within a company, right? Like um, yeah. the fact that Eric was working, what was his role yeah. at McDonald's? No, he was, he was a part-time worker, you know, flipping like, burgers. Flipping burgers yeah. to yeah. then taking on the super brand. Yeah. No, it's really cool. Does he talk about that? Yeah, he does. I mean, it, it's uh, uh, it's super inspiring to be around a person like that. And it, it was back in 2005. Uh, and now, I mean, he's grown the business and continue being the CEO. So really, really stepped, you know, grown with the company. And it's really cool to see. And he's really like, it's uh, something that's that he has created from scratch. And now we're mm. 150 people working with this. Mm. So. But but and but uh, I have to say I mean there's there's so much you know talk about McDonald's but one thing they've yeah. been pretty consistent with since since the beginning is that you should be able to you know it's actually recruiting from in in the company yeah, yeah. and making sure that there is actually a way to progress and being quite mm. uh, quite open to people's ideas yeah. I know people are are gonna kind of dispute that but at mm. least it's been one of these things that a lot of people say about it yeah. and uh, and one of the things that. I know that that McDonald's itself has talked about quite a mm. lot, a lot of times as one of their kind of strengths. Mm. And they really focus on on um, I think their employees and really uh, getting ways of finding ways ways into the organization. Like you said, recruiting from within. So I mean, couldn't say anything else than that McDonald's is a super impressive company, right? Mm. With but so it's, it's yeah. pretty big. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty big. <laughs> I mean, it what is. are the perks of working with the super brand? Like McDonald's. Yeah, so uh, yeah, basically we're so fortunate to be able to be able to work with companies like McDonald's. We're also working with Swarovski, for example, and just recently um, uh, started a partnership with Odeon Cinemas Group, mm. which is really big. So they own uh, SFBO in Sweden and Odeon Cinemas, SF Kino in Norway, and yeah, they're huge. But I mean, I think it's all about. Uh, really creating value for them and then one solving their key pains and problems and two like helping them reach their internal goals so that they can be able to grow yeah by spending less time on admin on their employees and making things smooth yeah. and also I mean helping them with their with their digital employee experience making things just a lot easier for everyone mm. and and clinics are kind of a super employer too you I uh You've been nominated as being one of the top employers by at least a couple of organizations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, uh, I think we have a very strong company culture. Uh, work quite a lot with our values uh, internally, both uh, starting from, I mean, the recruitment process to all, to how the way we run employee talks, for example, and develop our employees. So it's it's really part of our strategy and something that uh, we, when when we talk about, you know, growing the company, it's such a vital part to have really, you know, 
great employees and people who enjoy work. Yeah. So, and we are recruiting. So if there are any people out there um, yeah. looking for a job, please uh, drop me an email or find oh, me on LinkedIn. Exciting. Yeah. So exciting. looking for everything from uh, programmers to marketers to okay. people in the should sales we, team. Should we apply? Yeah. We can apply. Should Project apply, managers. But <laughs> not, not now. <laughs> I've got my laptop out. Oh, okay, I can just like drop the resume. <laughs> Do you have a second? Oh yeah, sure. Oh, I'll just. What's your email? <laughs> it's Johanna dot at Quinix dot com. Okay, I'm just sharing that. And with you can the... also or go to Quinix dot com. Mm. Quinix dot com. Got it. See I all just the open that positions. Into the feed. Drop that into the chat. So if yeah, please do. Yes, it's in the chat. Contact, reach out. I, I also think that's that's so good. It's so good to see uh, both employers that that are that are saying these things loud because mm. most people are actually employing, uh, and it's really good to hear that you know and and be because yeah. today maybe you shouldn't be knocking doors. No. You know, like you can. I'm not saying that's wrong, mm. but you can knock doors online mm. and and you know through different social gatherings and stuff. It's mm. actually quite easy, even if you don't have a network. You can yeah, really. Definitely. You can really network a little bit online mm. and specifically if you're looking for stuff such as marketer or uh, even working with code mm. you're kind of required to you know like showing that you can do that is really important definitely, and, and definitely. it helps you know it helps to kind of have that and that, it's quite easy that, it's like just pinging mm. someone on whether it's uh, linkedin or facebook even twitter like yeah saying hi do you yeah i'm interested in a job so definitely the possibilities yeah. today are like so much easier today than it was a couple of years ago. Yeah, and th and that's that's so that's so important. See, th there are so many there are so many of these things where, you know, you hear people who, who have a really hard time getting a job, and mm -hmm. I mean, it, I mean, I'm not saying it's easy to get a job because mm -hmm. it's definitely not. Yeah, it's just that where you're gonna find the job is not. You can't really listen to what your parents are saying. <laughs> like <laughs> what they're saying is not correct. It's it's actually you know there's still a lot of stuff out there. What you really want to do typically is to work on that network. Yeah. And most people aren't going to be, I mean, like for instance, I, I, I do get people contacting me about things and I always forward that. Yeah. And typically, typically it doesn't lead somewhere, mm -hmm. but once in a while it really does. And if you do that kind of continuously, it mm. will lead somewhere. Yeah. Um, but you also, I mean, speaking about parents, do, do you feel that it, sometimes it's difficult to explain to your parents what you really do because i mean careers today are so different i mean the roles that many of us are having today didn't exist a couple of years ago and definitely not like 30 years ago when they graduated mm. uh you see what i mean so there are just so many new careers popping up it's completely different and mm. you were saying something when you came in here that you had a sales marketing meeting yeah and today um which is you know before it used to be you had this huge sales uh, there used to be a lot of salespeople, yeah. And um, in today, that kind of and marketing used to be something else. Typically, advertising, yeah. thinking about brand, the brand building, yeah, uh, stuff Design, like that. Yeah. But today, marketing is really comprised of sales in a different way. In many yeah. many companies, you you don't really say sales. We have account managers, and they're mm. they're dealing with our customers in different ways, and they have to kind of be with them through the process, whether yeah. it's B two B or B two C type customers, whatever level they're at. You have to deal with them, but it's a part of your marketing yeah. and it has to be because how you interact with a customer cannot be something that is outside of your brand and, and the realm of your of the marketing of what you're doing. And that can be super confusing, you know, yeah. like <laughs> because salespeople used to be so powerful. Exactly. And yeah. a lot of old salespeople they will be like, yeah, but sales is the most important in a company. Mm. And you go, oh, well, you're, I mean, it's not yeah. it's super important, but it's a part of marketing and yeah. we have to get that kind of clear. Exactly. So, I mean, like still I, the real sale, a sale, closing the deal, it's still mm. a vital for the growth of the company, of course. Absolutely. But then all, if you look at the customer journey, I mean, exactly to your point, uh, we can see that 70 to 80 percent of the research and the touch points with the customers are done before they meet an individual sales rep. Uh, from Quinix or from any other, like, especially B2B where I'm from. Mm. Uh, so it's really part of that strategy, understanding mm. the customer journey, understanding like where where do they find us? Because that will be the first point of sale, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And, and um, I mean, those are the people that you want to find. Again, it's yeah. like you don't knock doors anymore. No. And, and to, to that extent too, you, you, you really have to understand 
people know what they want mm. and you want to you want to find out who wants what you have yeah and you want to be able to reach them and maybe nudge them a little bit mm. but actually typically just being there yeah just being one of the people in that are in that community or in that influencing sphere or in in that that larger area mm. that they could turn to and provide value like especially mm. like this like tv show where something that people would like to tune, tune into learn something and be a part of uh and think the days when people were just out there like shouting their messages out are just gone mm. yes i have it still it still it still happens <laughs> still exists still yeah. Exists, still <laughs> yeah. Exists. but yeah i completely agree with you it's, yeah. it's completely changed and it's changing the dynamics of everything mm. and that's that's so uh, intriguing and like we are in that change and yeah. this is a change that has been happening for the last 20 years to be honest yeah. but it's really now starting to take a clear shape mm. where we can say well this is the new structure yeah this is how it looks like mm. i know it's not and in in some ways it's simpler than it used to be yeah it's much more easy in a way what you you, you really just have to understand the journey of any any customer it's easy and it's hard at the same time right because yes, then yeah. you really need to understand the journey and you really need to adapt your message and the value offer you have and really provide a good value. And I think the companies that mm -hmm. don't provide a value out in the market, they'll, either they have disappeared or they will disappear. Yeah. So it's, in a yeah. sense, it's also tougher. Yeah. The last time we were talking about that, I'm not sure if you remember, we were talking about uh, particularly helping, uh, you know, Ernst & Young Consultants, helping oh, yeah, companies, Katarina, helping yeah, uh, yeah, larger yeah. companies. It's actually a former colleague through. of mine. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Was that when you were a management consultant? Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So she's brilliant. Okay. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. And this is right. like, and I, I think you can hear this. A lot of people will talk about that transformation. It's a kind of a transformation, but it, it's yeah. been happening for a long time. And, and it really mm -hmm. comes down to what you're talking about. It's actually the customers that have so much more power. Yeah. And also that kind of need to understand that a company isn't a company anymore. It has to be more transparent. It has to lift the people that are working there, because in the end, we're just people. Yeah. Everyone. Mm. And and um, um, that sort of messaging, traditional messaging from companies, it just doesn't really work anymore. Everything is so fast, yeah. so you can't. You you need to let people shine. Yeah. And that's also a little bit what we talked about back then. And I think it's interesting when you speak about like a company is not really a company. And I think you're completely right. Now we we work quite a lot with producing a new brand platform that would basically guide our strategic journey onwards. Make sure that we, you know, we have one message when we grow. We make sure to be scalable when we go out there on new markets. Because it's also, it's that big difference when you're a small startup. Because I joined Quinix when we were seven people back mm. in 2010. And it's such a, such a different way of working where when you're like seven people, you have to be really operational and really be out there understanding every detail, but then it's all about growth. It's all about sales. And now when we're 150 people in seven, seven different countries, it's much more complex and we need to have scalable processes. We need to have one view of our brand and, uh, yeah, we need to set the structures in place so that all the employees know, uh, you know, how, how is, uh, Miss it, a decision being made and how do we grow in the best possible way? What are key KPIs? Where are we going? Mm. What's our vision, etc. So part of that was really building this strategic brand platform. And that's from a marketing perspective, it's all about like finding what's your brand personality. So actually looking at the company like it, ha like it is a person. So what personality traits would we like in clinics have? Uh, mm. What position should we have on the market? Mm. And what's the answer to those questions? Uh, we will launch it uh, next week on a Christmas party, actually. But I can give a sneak peek, so we want to. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> we get the super information. No, we actually, want to, we actually want to see ourselves as game changers out there. And both create you know, value with, uh, for companies to optimize their business, but also be the company that really uh, creates employee engagement for our customers. So that's... Uh, but basically, mm. if I would have like... Uh, a nickname on Quinix as a person, it would be the game changer. The game, <laughs> the game, game changer. changer. Yeah. Changer yeah. of games. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, but it, it's so important and, and it's so fun to do. And I think like when you work, actually I'm, I'm all for making that as early as you can. Yeah. Like even because the, the thing is, even when you're only seven people, mm. to really define that, take your time to 
think about what are the values, yeah. what are the things we want to see, how, are we, how do we want to impact the world, and in front of all, how do we want to impact ourselves? Mm. What do we want? You yeah. know, what do I want? What do you want? What, mm. what, what do you want? You know, yeah. and what do we then want together? Because it really kind of glues things together and it makes it so much easier. Because yeah. when you are, you know, even when you are 20, 30 people, I mean, things start diverging. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's so many different ideas of what it is that you're doing and, and what it is that you're trying to achieve. And it's not necessarily a bad thing if you talk about it. Mm. But it can get, you know, if two or three years pass and you're all, you know, oh, but we're... I. Th you know, we're walked in this direction over here. Yeah. You know, it can be really, really hard to bring. So, uh, so easy, especially if you run really fast, if you're a growth mm. company or startup. It's like it's all about making the right decisions with a really short notice because you you have a limited amount of resources and you really need to like make sure to prioritize them right. Mm. Your journey is quite interesting. You, you, you started as part of this team of seven. Yeah. And then you actually took time out. Exactly. And yeah. then you came back in. Then I came back. Yes. Three years out. Yeah, exactly. Consulting. And then, yeah. so how did that, I mean, what were you seeking when you went out? Oh, and what brought yeah. you back? So that's a really good question. So I joined Quinix in 2010 and we were seven people. And uh, it, it was a small startup growing a lot. It was super fun. And we were actually awarded as one of the fastest growing companies in Sweden, like the Gazelle. I think the Swedish viewer probably heard about that. Uh, but then I was approached by a Swedish management consultancy firm that uh, uh, have a fantastic culture and where I had a possibility then to be a part of their strategy team to really go out there, uh, help companies with their growth journeys, meeting a lot of management teams, uh, work with market entries both into Sweden but also looking at I mean, how is the product market fit and going to a lot of different industries. So at that point, I felt that that was a great toolbox that I really needed and also wanted to try, you know, try working in that space. And I had three amazing years with uh, Cordial Business Advice. It learned so much. And also, I think one of the most important learnings that I, that I got there was that all companies have their challenges that they work with constantly. And there are so many hard things out there that people work with and challenges. But that's also part of, you know, being being in a company, uh, being a manager. Otherwise, they wouldn't wouldn't need us. Right. Yeah. So that's also part because I had this idea, I think, quite naive that in those large corporations where everything would work really well because it's they look so successful, you know, from the outside and they are successful, but they are good at like handling challenges and that, that's a part of their everyday that life. So it's quite, quite interesting, I think, and comforting to see as well that all organizations have their challenges and it's all a matter of how you tackle them. But then I kept in touch with Eric Fjallborg, who's, who's the founder of Quinix. And then uh, after a couple of years and when they saw a need to really scale up the marketing team, build a data driven uh, international marketing team. Then, uh, then I was asked to to come back and build that, and then I had uh, got this really good skill set also working as a management consultant for a couple of years to be able to do that. So, right, and so that was five years ago, and we've grown with over five hundred percent since then. So it's been really, it's been a really fun fantastic. journey. Fantastic. Like, mm. Yeah, you've you've also uh, been nominated as a top marketing. What is it? It's, it's, no, you had an award from LinkedIn. Yeah, exactly. So top, one of the Sweden's top top marketeers. Yeah. Marketeer. Yeah. Yeah. So there was I think we're we're very um, active on social media and also working a lot with inbound marketing strategies, outbound marketing strategies, work, working very closely with sales and are very keen on both me but especially everyone in my team, like trying new things, uh, testing them, being very data driven. And if we see that something works, we scale it up. And if things don't work, we shut it down quite fast and then yeah. evaluate yeah. what could be done differently. So yeah. I think it's all about trying and being quite, you know, brave because it's yeah. it's all about being out there and trying new things when yes. it comes to marketing today. Mm. What's well, changing so fast as well? What would you do if you were to just duck out for three years, take a cheeky tangent, yeah. and That's come good back right back to where you are? I think I do that all of the time. <laughs> I think that's like that's like that's like yeah. um, part of who I am. To, Taking to a few one, years off, and then... no, that was okay. <laughs> let's take two years off. 
<laughs> we're gonna go there. Yeah. No, but I mean, uh, I I really love new challenges. So I've always mm. been kind of throwing myself at, at something that I find okay. This 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 is where the future is at, or or rather, not necessarily where the future is at. This is where I want the future to be. I'm mm. gonna make it there. You know, like that sort of. I'm gonna. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, create that sort of stuff. So I'm, you, you could say that I'm in one of those fits right mm. now. Mm. Uh, World is a so, fit. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, sort of a fit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that kind of, in a way, the studio, right? It's definitely. But but yeah, I think yeah. I think um, um, when you're when you're chasing something something, um, it's always that 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 uh, that you're seeing that something needs or could change. And then you, you feel like, oh, would that be a good change or a bad change? And you ask yourself, do I want to drive the change or do mm. I want to, you know, do I want to stop the change? What, what do I want to do? But I really like to see, get, see things getting done mm. and actually see things change. And I think that really drives me. So in a way, I typically uh, build, help be a part of the beginning of building something. But then quite often I'm, I'm, I'm the person that should go on and, and start doing something. Uh, something Shouldn't else. we drive it towards the environmental questions then so you can start solving them? Uh, probably, I mean, right. that's, that's becoming the next uh, big things that we're going to have to solve, guys. Yeah. Uh, we're we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're gonna <laughs> next challenge for you. Next yeah. challenge. Let's solve this stuff. But I mean, the Stockholm tech scene right now, it's, it's amazing and it's, it's really boiling. So it's such an inspiring place to be a part of and we it spoke about that uh, yeah. just yeah. earlier Lee, where yeah. you come from New Zealand and right. the US and just fell in love with Stockholm right because because of the tech scene I guess yeah. as well yeah yeah mm. very much so mm. very much so the scale of the startups here mm. Mm. yeah it's amazing there's so it's... many good ideas and in front of all also there are people that <clears throat> that would what I said here is and, and what you're talking a little bit about as well is that um, you need to have a lot of guts, you know, and you need to be able to um, to know when you need a change, mm. but not to change because it's hard, you know. That's not typically why why people change. And and the good thing here is that there's very rarely hard feelings in Sweden, yeah. whereas in other places where I've been and I worked, it can get really sour, mm. you know, when a company culture kind of starts to deteriorate and things. People get really like very mad with each other. Mm. Right, and they can't work <laughs> together, you know. But in Sweden, I feel like, and I mean, it happens in Sweden too. It's a consensus too. culture, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, but you know, everyone can, wants to get along. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I think yeah. it's like we we have a good. Uh, generally, there's high level of empathy in Sweden, mm. and people understand that other have an understanding for why other people did something nasty. You know that they could receive this nasty. You know, okay, but you know, well, he is really stressed, or they are under a lot of pressure, mm. and you know that happened. And then we try to move on because mm. most people actually are really motivated by some form of bigger ideal. Yeah, or bigger and, yeah, and I think that's a part of it, right? Because in Sweden, we really believe in in the employees and like in empowering them. Uh, which now for us, for example, growing into seven countries, we hear that quite a lot from, for example, the UK or Germany, that it's, it's so non-hierarchical, mm. that it's, it's a very flat organization where you can really go and, you know, grab a coffee with a CEO. And uh, if you have some things that you would like to bring up, some improvements, that's all right. And I think that's quite unusual in other countries. Or you might have another... Absolutely. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. Definitely mm. agree. Mm. Definitely agree. And that also tends to foster that care, yeah. You know, where yeah. you actually uh, really start developing, and that, that's that's part of the problem. I think sometimes you know you you get this um, people inside of these organizations. They tend to come in. You come in. Everyone mm. comes in young. They come in with with a billion of ideas. Mm. You know everything could be improved, and then you typically have old people who are a little bit more jaded. You know, we've tried this a billion times. It's never gonna work. Yada 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 yada. You know, that sort of <laughs> that sort of general attitude. And it's really important to get these people to actually work together. Yeah. And sit and understand why. Maybe that wasn't the best idea ever, but we could. But you know, the older person could concede. But yeah. you know what? Why don't you try? Yeah. You know, because failure isn't the end of the world. Exactly. Right? I, yeah. And I I think there, that's kind of part of part of that to mm. not not necessarily have a no but allow people to learn in a work 
space in mind. Yeah, definitely. And just because make I mistakes, fail doesn't yeah. mean that someone else has to fail. Yeah. It yeah. just doesn't mean that. Yeah. It doesn't mean that I'm bad, though, if they succeed. I think it's it maybe so many different factors, right? But I think you're completely right. And I think it's all about learning from your mistake, making mm. smart mistakes, making sure not to do the same mistake twice, but also share your learnings with your team members. If you've done something that just didn't work and you have data to support that, uh, you, you often have or get some feedback from the market or from colleagues, share that. The distance work. Let's mm. make sure not to do it again. <laughs> Let's improve it. Mm. Going go back to uh, Quinix and Mac time. Yeah. There, I guess, would you say that there was less risk having a, a customer up front than going for investor money? No, I think so. for us, it's been all about, it's been quite a lot about organic growth, although we took in investors in 2000. 14, Alvin and Didikson, who are also investing in Trustly, for example, you might have heard about that uh, payment platform and a cost podcast solution. And then last year we got Battery Ventures as investors. So one of the big American uh, tech investors, they have companies like Glassdoor and Marketo in their portfolio. But before that, we've, I mean, we've grown organically and it is together with our customers to a large extent. And also... We talked about that a bit before if we're uh, product-driven yeah. or, or market-driven market or customer-driven. Yeah. And I would say it's been a combination where we have used the valuable input from our customers. And we also have a customer panel that we're working with on a regular basis to hear their inputs. And when we do developments, we their input is so crucial. But on the other hand, we also need to make sure that we are thought leaders and that we are developing things that we believe will benefit the market. Uh, because the customers, it's not always that they know what they want. They know what they already know, right? Right, right. right. So I think you, you need to have that good combination of both listening to your customers, but then also uh, being out there, listening on the market and form the trends. But wh at what point did you make the decision to not be a bespoke service uh, to just having more global product offering? Uh, I think it has developed along the way. Uh, actually, so uh, I think it's been a part of our strategy, building a, a large international scalable platform. And in order for us to do that, we need to be, you know, true SaaS. So have one platform, we have releases every second week uh, and um, basically one product offering. But then the, the, the product in itself is very flexible. So you can do a lot of um, adjustments and uh, configurations in the product, but then the product stays the same everywhere, basically. But it's all, for us, it's all about, you know, helping employees to follow rules and regulations on the labor market. And I think that Sweden and Scandinavia are one of the most complex markets in the world when it comes to labor mm. regulations. So the feedback is that if we can do Scandinavia, I can basically do any market because mm. it's so complex and you so have so much overtime rules. And when you have like bank holidays, etc., and how that should apply on, mm. on the employees. Mm. Really cool. And I was thinking there, I have to ask you something real quick. Oh, yeah. Do you run ad? Because you're, you're having two week releases, which typically is, kind of, I suppose, you're running some form of agile management in the yeah. programming department. Mm. Do you also run it in marketing? And is that something you run cross company or is it something that it's is mainly in our RD product department? Uh, we are getting there with the marketing department. I would like us to be even more agile and working more in sprints. I would say now we've just we've just formed the, um, quite a new team. So we're, mm. now it's all about creating, you know, the basics, setting the roles, responsibilities, uh, getting everyone on board, uh, setting the vision. But then I think that will be something for 2019. I'll, I've actually bought a lot of books on Amazon about oh, nice. agile marketing and sprints mm. and marketing. And and I, I want to say that for those of you not not everyone may be aware of of Scrum and Agile mm. in general, but it's really good look look that up if you're not because it's uh, something we were um, in China. I think it was in 2011. We we, we uh, me and a friend Mika we actually built a system for how to do that in project form, like because we we really oh, saw really? that in software development and thought, mm. hey. Why can't we apply that to all sort of work? Right? So we, st yeah. we started got really nerdy about that. And only later, of course, did we realize that's basically Kanban, that's Toyota. You know, it, yeah. it all kind of connects. It actually comes <laughs> from yeah. manufacturing practices yeah. 
and we brought it kind of the full circle. We felt kind of stupid. We're like, ah, oh, we reinvented we're the wheel. Do <laughs> <laughs> yeah, reinventing stuff. Yeah. But yeah, you can really apply it to a lot of different things. Um, where the important thing is, as long as you have some work that are project based, yeah, you can do it because you basically have workflow, which is stuff you just have. You know, it kind of comes back. You, mm. you, you're using processes to define it, and then you have this project stuff. But um, check it out, and if you're a marketer, don't be afraid. Or, or, or you know, any anywhere you work, don't be afraid to really read into that. Don't yeah. just let the software uh, the engineers <laughs> have all of the glory of that particular management form, because it really can create a flat management structure and help to. Um, you know, look at what do we need to do today instead of getting lost to what what, what is going to happen in two or three months, which we typically don't know. Mm. No, it is super strong. And I think the vital part when it comes to agile uh, work methods, it's all about also having more long-term goals that you strive mm. towards always and to have that vision because agile is all about working in sprints. So basically two weeks, one month uh, mm. in general, but then you need also to have that long-term goal so you don't lose that it's really, I think that one of the traps in in wor working very agile is like a lack of a commitment to deadlines sometimes. And I think mm. you can really, if you have milestones along the way, you can in a way um, avoid that. Mm. Yeah, that's true. And it can be combined in different ways. Yeah. But but the, the, uh, kind of, uh, I really agree with you there. It's kind of agile helps you to answer why. Mm. It kind of ignores the question how. Yeah. And then you ask what? Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, this is the lo lo long term goal. Mm. What do we do today? Mm. Right now? Because yeah. we're going to need to get closer. What's the steps that we're going to take now? Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and it's really powerful because I think, and also I think about this a lot about Swedish, you know, like, like working in China for so long, people mm. are just like, oh, let's just do it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and they, they do it, you know, yeah. and there's no fear. There is no you know, economic calculations, like how is this going to work? Although is I'm, it... you know, I'm a management consultant. Yeah, <laughs> right? I understand. So I like my business cases yeah, yeah. as well. You, you want to make some money on that? Yeah. No, but I, I'm not saying you should not do it. Yeah. But there, there is a point to that where quite often we get stuck and spend lots and lots and lots of research, uh, research and money and, and man hours trying to figure out what is going to happen, what, what this problem, we can foresee this problem that could happen in, mm. in two to three months. What do we do to solve that? Yeah. Where, you know, things change today so fast. Yeah. And you, you really cannot... It, 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 no, I think long it's gone bit, are the days of like the five-year plans with yeah, waterfall. It, exactly. Oh, you yeah. can't models, work right? like that yeah. anymore. It's super dangerous to mm. try to think that you... And it typically also comes from the idea that we think that we know stuff. And I think that's the most. That, I that's think the kind you of need to add in stuff. that part of really being data driven, add yeah. a part of analysis. So you really the things that you do, evaluate them and see if they work or not. And Absolutely. then you can be even more. Right. Like kind of it, the right but, direction. But it's an iterative process. Yeah, it is. And, and I think that's, that's really the danger. Like, um, it, it, it's, a, it's a specifically a danger today. Mm. But, but it, it's always kind of been a danger in that, that we think that we know stuff. Yeah. The world is incredibly complicated. Uh, yeah. We can't even, you know, play a chess game and beat a computer, you know, and that's <laughs> yeah. very limited compared to all of the yeah. stuff that could happen in the world. Yeah. Uh, so we simplify it and we typically use money to simplify it because that's a quite kind of easy way to measure things. Mm. But it rarely ever gives us any idea what is going to happen in the future. Mm. Um, so, so just a little, you know, sidestepping there. Go out there, be yeah. agile. Go with the crowd. Crowd. <laughs> Whatever you do, it's kind of fun. It's really cool to learn, and it's very simple. It's a very, very simple way to kind mm. of get the, get things done. Basically, mm. really recommend. Mm. We have a we have a comment on the stream yes. from Robert Mitchell, who, by the way, verified that his game also got a hundred downloads. Whoa! Nice and nice. big congratulations. That yes. means we have a second prize. That is run. Am yes. I wait? Should I? Can I say that? Yeah, you can. Go okay. to, do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Two, two, is it two thousand dollars? Two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars. Two. Robert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking awesome. What are you gonna spend oh, did on? Oh, I curse. Oh, damn it. Beep. I curse. <laughs> we gonna fix that. He also made a nice comment, and um, it's not a question; it's a comment. So, but let's make it into a question. He says one particular company in the UK gives each of their employees stocks in the business. This in turn motivates everyone to work to their best. 
uh, as it's in their stocks and the company's interest. Hmm. I can make this into a question. Can you record uh, stock shares uh, uh, in, um, in your system? That's a good question. Mm. Uh, we actually have a program for that. So, mm. And we have some criteria that you need to have fulfilled in order to have the possibility to do that. Uh, one uh, criteria is that we have as a standard to, that you should have worked a minimum two years and then uh, work according to our values, etc. There are there are some criteria set up, but uh, so so the overall answer is yes. <laughs> so we have a lot of shareholders yes. among our employees, especially the ones that have been with the company for a long time, mm. including myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Hmm. And okay, so let's. Go but then you buy them, so we yeah, don't we don't uh, yeah, distribute them. Yeah. So These you have to invest really yourself. It's really tricky in Sweden, actually. Part exactly. of that is uh, kind of complicated. Yeah. To say the least in Sweden. Yeah, but definitely, I mean, it's definitely motivating, especially if you're part of a growth company and you mm. see the growth that you do and the work that you contribute with really turn into something. So I think that's uh, it's a really good comment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so and and it is it is super. I mean, I I just think that we we keep getting. Also, we've got back to that question uh, a few times regarding ownership, and it's so important, you know. And it, it's incredibly, it's it's really, if if you want people, not people are driven by different things. So mm. you really just really need to understand who you who you're dealing with mm. and, and what are they, you know, passionate about. But because yeah. some people just don't want to own. Oh, yeah. they, they and that's have, fine as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. a good salary, yeah. and, a, and a, you know, yeah. and you should never push people to be someone they're not. And yeah. I, I feel this is so easy to do, uh, you know, regardless of the situation. Yeah. Uh, but it's really important to have that possibility because some people yeah. are very driven by that. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, did you check out Dow Stack? I know I've been telling you about this. <laughs> not yet. Okay, you have to check it out because that's okay. basically a blockchain, uh, and you you can check it out if you have the time. Go go check it out. I'm not sure. Actually, what I have, was it? Can you say it again? It's it's a it's called DAO Stack. So it's basically you create a company that lives mm -hmm. on the Ethereum um, network. So All right. it, you basically create this contract with, which which mm -hmm. allows you to set up a company that is everything is automated uh, on the Ethereum blockchain. So provided, so you set up this set of rules mm -hmm. and you can build companies that are completely where, for instance, such things as ownership. Mm -hmm. Maybe you created this great code. You know that is derivative. Mm. It becomes central part of the mm. service that you're offering. Mm. Then you could actually make sure that that's always rewarded. Um, so, for instance, even if you work because this is one of the big problems you typically have in the beginning of a company, you have people mm. coming in, they work a little bit, yeah. they do some stuff, and it's really hard to kind of uh, make sure that everyone gets their share. And it's oh, kind so of it's all about setting up the legal structure for the people working in the company, or. Yeah. So yeah. you. So basically, it sets up everything. So mm -hmm. so everyone would have everything. Um, <laughs> Good question. Uh, no, yeah, every, well. not, not everything, <laughs> but it does really take care of these sort of things. So you yeah. can have two tokens. One token would be some something that could translate to money, that mm -hmm. is salary. One yeah. token would be uh, a voting token, for mm -hmm. instance. So oh, depending yeah. on how much value you have, maybe you have more votes in yeah. how you change the company's kind of direction like a forward. Preference stock, then. Yeah. Like we, exactly. Like we say. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So so. So you could really uh, do that. Anyway, that's still kind of in the development. I, this, hmm. this is something I haven't been updating yeah. on this before, but I know that there is a lot of uh, interesting stuff that is happening there because it's a huge issue. I need to check that out. They have a huge interesting in the stock markets. I used to be part of the board of directors for the Swedish Shareholders Association mm. and then chairman of the board for the Young Swedish Shareholders Association. Now I'm too mm. old, but uh, back in the days. So, back uh, in the days. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Well, <laughs> well, we're coming to the last five minutes of the show. Yeah. What is next for you? Next for us, it's all about. No, 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 no. You. For me. You. As yes. an individual. Yeah. Not uh, even as a, as a strategic marketer, but you. Yes. Oh, so, today, this week. This is a very convoluted it's, question. It isn't is a it? tricky question. So okay. next for me this week, it's all about in Sweden. We have um, <laughs> it's, it's 
something. Something called she's Christmas. She's so CMO. No. She's yeah. like, <laughs> what, <laughs> what the key fuck message. did box yeah. it in? Uh, this week is all about uh, starting Christmas celebrations. I think it's uh, Advent in Sweden. Okay. So. Oh my God, yes. Can the, we please the, use the it? The Christmas background. Oh yeah, also. it's really oh, Christmassy here today. It's there. It's there. Yeah. Oh, love it. We can, love we can, it. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Ah, uh, beautiful. Snow. So I think we should keep that. It's about time so to start celebrating Christmas. So that's next Christmas. up for me. Celebrating Christmas, Christmas, recharging, and then doing some skiing. Do, nice. oh, Over skiing New Year's. Snowboard. snowboard. Will you yeah. get hurt, Chris? Yeah, I always do. You always do? I always okay. do. <laughs> it would be fun to have you in a cast. Like, it is, a bit uh, of art to, to direction. It is kind of fun. <laughs> do you, do you okay. snowboard or ski yourself, being from New Zealand? Hell no! No? Hell do you no. Have, you have mountains of snow. Right? I touched snow for the first time when I was 16 years old. Thank and it was you. like this. Okay. This is like Lord of the Rings landscape. And I haven't uh, been there myself, but. The movies lie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the movies lie. And so do I, actually. I just have a disclaimer. So Robert did not win the $2,000. What? Wait, what? Um, <laughs> His game is called Pets. Oh, that was not the right game. And yeah, so s sorry. And uh, humbly, Robert was the one to draw that to our attention. Oh. But uh, Fish Cage, if you're watching, <laughs> Fish Cage creators, you're looking at me with such disapproval right now. I mean, I, 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 I feel like I'm, I'm now I'm, and, I, I feel such, such shame. I'm, uh, but didn't this. they do this in the Oscars as well? So, I mean, yeah. right. professionals have done this previously. Yes. So, you just... Yes. I'm gonna, I and I mean, I, that was a yeah. data-driven decision, by the way. I got the data and I ingested it, created this chart, put it on the green screen. Yeah. All I had was... So it was a data-driven <laughs> decision, Robert. Yeah. It had no, what? No, can't go on. What? <laughs> <laughs> data-driven decisions. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Okay? Thumbs up I, for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, but awesome job. Sorry about that. I think we're gonna keep on, and I, I'm gonna blame myself. I'm, I'm, yeah, I really want to kind of blurt blurt things out because <laughs> I'm so excited, and then it's kind of constantly. Yeah. Sometimes wrong. data lie. Yeah. Right. Occasionally, yes. I'm right. It does happen. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You were right about. Hmm. I mean, you <laughs> <laughs> you did win the uh, the Christian von Helen Prize, I special did. prize. Yeah, it was just complete. That's that's mm. true. Stupid prize. Stupid. <laughs> All right. Do you have any last words to, for the world? Well, a couple of words then. Okay. We're recruiting. Oh. So come, mm. uh, come to quinix.com. Uh, follow me on LinkedIn and uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. So nice. Mm. And we're going to have a Christmas special in two weeks' time. Well, holiday special. Yeah. Holiday special. I want to warn we're you that it holiday. is going to get more and more Christmassy in here. Oh. A little bit slower. We're starting. Can you see kind of the, light. the gnome in the I put a corner? Gnome there. <laughs> I did, we have the yeah. lights up here that is constantly yeah. we have in your head. Here. Red <laughs> candles. <laughs> we have a, I have a red candle. This, so. Look at this. I'm really trying. It is very Christmassy. I'm, yeah. I'm doing my best. I actually bought, you can't see it, but I bought this whole green long thing. And by, <laughs> yeah, green on green screen just doesn't really work well. So even if I had it back here, you wouldn't see it. <laughs> it's <laughs> typical when you, when you realize, you green. like, beginner mistake. <laughs> Should have known that one. <laughs> exactly. Well, on next week's show, we have Siavash Habibi. He is the head of business development and communications at Tech Buddy. Ooh, cool. Oh, yeah? Very nice. You're down? Okay. I'm down. I'm down. We're going to be talking some, some tech stuff. Some tech stuff. It's some cool. Yeah. They're a Swedish startup that offers independent technical support at home. They'll help customers when their electronics are not working properly, help you install new product uh, per and purchase decisions. I need all of the above. I knew all the above, so I'm very excited about having him on this uh, on the screen. I'm going to ask all the questions, yeah. and they're going to be incredibly selfish. Unless it, you ask them first. It's it's unless actually quite incredible service. I really mm. recommend it. I was actually talking to my mom the other day because she she does have a little bit of she's a little bit technologically retarded, and. Um, Are you sorry, really allowed mom. to say sorry, retarded mom. on air? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, I love you, but, yeah. but that, you, I mean, she, I she would be very mom. open about this. And the thing is, <laughs> most of us today, we work with this the whole day. Like kind of the last thing I want to do when I get back home 
is to help someone fix their computer. Because typically I've been working on something <laughs> very, very similar to like that, you know, scouring you know, lots and lots and lots of different resources, trying to figure out why some stuff ain't working again, you know, like, and then you get home, you really don't want to, you know, you just, no, can we yeah, just, just sit and all. talk or not yeah. like, so. and, and th this service is actually pretty great. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, it's a really good idea because there are so many people that can't get the help they need when it comes to this. And, Very you true. know, Very true. it's just good. Yeah. 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 I'm really looking forward to this interview. And, and did you know that Savage is actually uh, an own, uh, he used to be uh, in a TV show. Yes, uh -huh. yeah, exactly, so he's exactly. Yeah, yeah oh he's a God. news Exciting. producer. And yeah. he was a portfolio manager for water.org. So if any of you are Matt Damon fans, you'll know what that means. But look at water.org and maybe ask some questions about that next and week And he has been working with Bill Clinton as well. So oh, what's yeah. that? Oh, ooh, uh, Clinton ooh. Global uh, Initiative. Okay. Oh, yeah. So he's, yeah, he's a really cool person mm -hmm. here. Oh, cool. Good. Cool. So okay. we're going to dive, dive into really that lucky. the next week. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's next week. Thanks for joining us this week. You've been amazing with your comments and questions, so thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for coming on mm -hmm. to the show. Thank you. Thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Great, Great to, to be here. Wonderful. I feel like we, there's pressure on anyone watching to improve. That's the <laughs> through line. To, to learn from the game changer. Yeah. <laughs> Um, cool. Thank you so much. We have a ritual. We end the show together by pressing this button. This magical button will end yeah. the feed. Do not press okay. the wrong button. All right, so we're going to hover on this and we're going to say bye to the camera over there. We're going to say, hey, bye, guys. Hey, hey,